Alright guys, what's going on and welcome to a ladder predictions of the uh, Toyota 2017 Premiership season of the AFL. We're going to be going through each team, running it down, predicting where they'll finish and maybe even the Brownlow uh, and the Premiers. But it will be quite hard to pick out some of those. Before we get started here today, I would like you to, uh, if you are interested in Supercoach, interested in joining up or have already got a side, then join my Super Coach Week. It'll be uh, down in the description as well as the comment section. I think the code is 177538 if you would like to join. Anyone can join, hoping to get a somewhat near full week and we can all have a bit of fun with Super Coach this year. Without further ado, let's get into my line of predictions for 2017. As you just saw, we have the Brisbane Lions. On a new coach, Chris Fagan, they will be doing uh, going into a bit of a rebuilding process. They've just lost Pierce Hanley to Gold Coast, who did underperform last season. But I think he could still uh, have an impact. He's a talented player, and losing him uh, could also have an effect. They have good players like Dane Zorko and uh, Daniel Rich, but with players like Rockliffe looking to possibly exit the club, even looking in that last trade period to exit the club, they look like they will be finishing in the wooden spoon position, uh, down from last year's 17th new coach. But, you know, anything can happen. But I, they might get around three wins. We are the Navy Blues. We are the old dark Navy Blues. In 17th, I've gone with Carlton Blues. Now, I believe that they'll finish in around 17th. Uh, players exiting the club like Tui and not bringing anyone new back in. Gibbs was going to Adelaide. It really looked like he was going to Adelaide. Didn't have the best of seasons at the end. And, you know, they have some good plays. They still have Gibbs, obviously. They have young players like Weedering. They also have players like Cade Simpson. But uh, I just don't think they can hang with the big blokes, if you know what I mean. But I think it won't be a horrible season, but many are predicting them to finish uh, 17th, and I am also one of those people, as I just don't see them performing as well as the rest of the clubs. In 16th, we have Gold Coast. Now with Jay Gromira and Dion Prestia leaving, both going to Hawthorne and Richmond respectively. They did bring in Pierce Hanley, as mentioned before, as well as Jared Witts. But I just don't think it'll be enough for Rocket and his boys to go up and uh, get any higher than they did last year. They did finish 15th last year. And, you know, they're just shadowing GWS, really. They came in before GWS, but GWS have absolutely skyrocketed them with, uh, I, I guess, just better recruiting. And I don't think they will get much further than uh, 16th. Now, with Gary Ablett, uh, he came back in the JLT series. He... Uh, actually put up his house for sale in uh, Gold Coast actually so uh, and he said he's willing to take a pay cut to go back for Geelong for maybe one last season so it looks like he'll be going to Geelong and doesn't really want to play for Gold Coast who knows he might get injured like he does every year every, every year now haha <laughs> joking Gaz you're a legend See the powers fly up up to win the premiership flag. Now, this may be unpopular, but I've gone with Essendon in 15th. Reasoning for that, players coming back after 12 months of no football. That's a long time if you're a footballer. No football for 12 months. How will they mix in with the players like McDonald, Tip and Woody and Zach Merritt, breakout stars last year? How will they mix in? How is John Walsfold doing? How will it all go together? I don't think it can just go together like that. I think it might take some time for these players to come back, get uh, going. Obviously, they've been training together, no doubt about it, since they're back. But still, will they gel well enough 
for AFL football. I think they'll win a few games that you don't expect them to. Who knows? They could just gel perfectly and finish, I don't know, near the top eight where everyone seems to be predicting them. I'm predicting them much lower at the 15th position this year. I, as again, I just can't see all everything coming together straight away. I think it might take two years maybe, maybe in the 2018 season they might challenge for the top eight. Sing it one and all. In 14th, we have the Roos, the Kangas, North Melbourne. Now, they lost, obviously, Daniel Wells, Brent Harvey, Nick Del Santo, Drew Petrie, and Michael Ferrito. Five of their key, 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 key players throughout the years. And uh, they brought in people like uh, Marley Williams, but I just don't think he can fill the role, really. I, and also with Todd Goldstein, what if he gets injured and uh, obviously they still have Jared Waite. We'll see how they go. I I think I was going to put them lower on this list. I was going to put them lower than Essendon. But then I thought, what if the Essendon players just don't combine, as I've said many a times in the last two minutes. I think North Melbourne could win a few games that you don't expect them to. I don't think they'll have a bad season as you expect them to, but obviously losing stars, well not stars, but getting rid of stars and also losing Daniel Wells will not be good for the club uh, in the first bit of the season before they can get together. I think they'll win a few games that maybe you don't expect them to. <laughs> Thirteenth, we have Frio. They brought in so many new players in the trade period, like Cam McCarthy, Joel Hamling, Brad Hill, and Shane Kirsten. And if they can get full seasons out of players like even Aaron Sanderlands, Nat Fife, Harley Bennell, we haven't seen him, and Michael Johnson, if they get full seasons out of these guys, or at least three quarters of a season, these guys could be real threats. Uh, this year is so close with every single team. I really had to think it through. Even the lower teams, probably not Brisbane or Carlton, but teams above that, I really had to think it through. And I think that, you know, they, they could be real contenders for the finals. I just uh, think there are other teams that uh, have better players, a better list, and uh, obviously coming after last season, they'll definitely want to improve and show that they aren't no silly little club, but uh, I, I just think people have kind of found out Ross Lyon, and we'll see We'll see what happens this year for the Frio Dockers. we got the power to win, power to roll, come on! In 12th, we have Port Adelaide. Paddy Ryder returns. He could be a pivotal part of uh, the Port Adelaide power going forward in this year. But there isn't all too much going on there. Charlie Dixon probably needs to have a better season. You still have players like Travis Boak in there and Hamish Hartlett. Chad Wingard, obviously. But other than that, there isn't too much going on there, I don't believe, for, uh, for Port Adelaide. And I don't think that... Really, their list isn't that good. I don't think that they will get any higher than 12th. People are predicting them. I saw some even in the finals. I don't think they'll get higher than 12th. I just don't think they're good enough. Just straight up, I don't think they're good enough for the finals. They're, they're probably less likely than Fremantle. Do I have to change this list? <gasps> In 11th this year, we will have Collingwood, maybe. Now, obviously picking up Daniel Wells and Chris Main, along with their star players that they already have, such as Scott Pendlebury, Jamie Elliott coming back in, uh, still side bottom, uh, Adam Trelaw, and a bunch of players that can really do some damage 
anything could happen with Collingwood. It's definitely one of the teams where you do not know what is going to happen. But I think they will finish in about 11th. Uh, I don't expect them to reach the finals because obviously in the finals are the teams who are, are really looking good. Uh, it's so close this year. I put Collingwood down here. They have a great list, but it's just if they can uh, play on the big stage. They have players like Jesse White still, uh, Darcy Moore obviously still coming up, and players like that with also uh, Lock Lockie Keith returning and anything could happen again. I think Collingwood will finish 11th though. Away from Tiger Land, a fighting fury, we're from Tiger Land. In any weather, you will see us with a grin, risking head and skin. In 10th, not 9th, we have my club, Richmond Tigers. I really want them in the A. Like, you can. <laughs> You do, you do not understand how much I love this club, but I can't really, I don't really, you just don't know. We brought in Prestia and Caddy and then Curvis. They will be great assets for the club. Uh, obviously losing Brett Delidio wasn't the best, but maybe if we can get th that decent pick for him. Hashtag GWS, please finish 18th. We also lost Ty Vickery, which I don't give a shit about. A lot of our players sometimes didn't want to work for each other last season, which I absolutely hated. Hopefully, uh, we jogged... In the JLT Community Series, I reckon we looked good. I, I liked the game against Collingwood, especially that last quarter. I didn't like the, uh, didn't like the first half at all. But, you know, I really thought... We kind of brought it back in that last half there uh, against Collingwood. We obviously also beat both Adelaide's Port and and the Crows. Uh, obviously, people say, "Oh, that's preseason. It doesn't matter. They're going to finish ninth or last." Um, I don't think we'll <laughs> I don't think we'll finish last. Uh, I've actually seen some people predict us to finish last. But when you have players like Dusty Martin uh, bringing in Josh Caddy and uh, Dion Presti, you also have players like Trent Cochin, even Anthony Miles, Alex Rance, probably the best defender in the competition. We can't be finishing that low. I think we'll finish 10th maybe, but that's just me going with, you know, my fixated, oh, we're Richmond, we're probably going to play shit. Let's be optimistic. We're going to finish in the top four. <laughs> It's a grand old flag, it's a high-flying flag, it's the emblem for me and for you. Just missing out on the finals are the Melbourne Demons. They obviously brought in Michael Hibbard and also John Lewis, but uh, they also retained Jesse Hogan, which was very good. Simon Goodwin's first year at the office. I reckon they will finish ninth, just missing out in the finals. It was a real toss-up between them and the 8th position team, which you can probably tell who it is. I think they'll finish ninth. They have some great players, players still up and coming, like Christian Petrarca will probably be a star. John Lewis to guide them. Jack Watts, what can he do? And they've obviously still got players like Nathan Jones in there, both Tom and Oscar McDonald, with obviously Hibbard fitting into that back, back line with them as well. Max Gorn, what a season he had last year. Can he maintain this superhuman type of play? in the ruck. Is he worth that 650k in Supercoach? I had him, I got rid of him, and I put in Shane Mumford because I wanted some dosh, but I'm still playing around with it. There, there's just so many players in this team that have potential to be amazing. Sam Wiedemann, <laughs> Angus Brayshaw, and they also have the players in there to guide them such as John Lewis and Michael Hibbard even coming in. We'll see what happens for the Demons in uh, 2017. I think they'll just miss out on the 8th, and then maybe next season they'll finish 8th, 9th, 10th, 7th, probably they'll they'll probably win the flag. When the Saints go marching in, oh when the Saints go marching in, oh how I want to be with 
Hi guys, welcome to part two of this video, and it is the top eight. Let's go. I reckon in eighth we will have St Kilda. Now they have brought in players such as Nathan Brown to help out in the defence, Kobe Stevens and Jack Steele, and they also have Jake Carlisle coming back in. They have some great young players like Jade Gresham, who uh, is up for the rising star possibly. They also have players like Nick Rewalt, still Jack Steven, Tim Membry, he is going to be a little legend. Josh Bruce was a bit inconsistent last year, but I think he might be able to improve. And they also have players like Jack Nunes as well, as I said, Nathan Brown coming into the, the defence to hopefully power up their defence, which wasn't the best last year. They need to make themselves harder to score against, but I think they can post some pretty pretty big scores this season. I think they just get the edge over Melbourne, maybe on percentage. I think maybe on percentage, maybe by a game, maybe by a draw. Holy shit. Anyway, I reckon uh, St Kilda are in for a pretty good year and they will make the finals this year. And you know, that they're looking good for the future. Team at Hawthorne, we're the mighty fighting horse. In seventh, I have Hawthorne. Now, people are saying Hawthorne will drop out the eight. Oh my god! So they got rid of John Lewis and Sam Mitchell, and also Brad Hill has exited the club. But I just can't see Hawthorne dropping out of the eight. I think seventh is a really good position. Like, predictable wise I think that is the position they will finish this year uh, they obviously brought in Ty Vickery who gives a shit uh, Tom Mitchell replacing the Mitchells and they also brought in Jager and Mira so two very very young players uh, coming in to fill the role of Sam Mitchell and John Lewis going out but both Sam Mitchell and John Lewis played very well for their respective clubs West Coast and Melbourne uh, in the JLT community series so you know uh, it's probably a loss on their point. They're saying, oh, they're too old. Let's get some young body in like Mitchell and O'Meara. Can Mitchell and O'Meara go for 10 more years? Probably, but will they be stars like Sam Mitchell and John Lewis were? <laughs> Maybe. They have players like Jack Gunston still and still Rioli. I think their team is still good enough for finals. I think they'll make the finals. I don't. I think... At max, they'll get to the semis this year, maybe. I I can't see them dropping out of the eight, and that is why I've put them in seventh. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. In sixth, we have Geelong. Last year they finished third, and I think they will finish sixth this year uh, because there are other clubs up there who I think will play just a little bit better than them. So going out of the club, we had Jimmy Bartel, Corey Enright, and Josh Caddy going to, well, Bartel and Corey Enright retired, but Caddy went to the Tigers. As you guys know, they still have Joel Selwood and obviously Paddy Dangerfield, probably up for another brown low. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they have Aaron Black, who's a massive wild card, as well as Nakaya Cockatoo. Uh, and then they also have Tom Hawkins still as a key forward. And obviously, uh, bring in Zach Tui, and uh, they still have Harry Taylor. Their defense is looking all right. And also Sam Managola, he, he kind of impressed me at the end of last year. I think he has a role to play in their squad this year. Scott Selwood, what can Scott Selwood do? Probably not much. Anyway, I think they'll finish about 5th, uh, not 5th, 6th. I can't, they're like Hawthorne. I don't think they'll have as good as year as last year, but I think Paddy Dangerfield and Joel Selwood will still work together beautifully. And I think they'll still have a very good year. As I said, it's going to be a massive year, a lot of points scored, uh, and it's going to be very close at the top. So I don't, I don't expect them to, you know, be so far behind the top four. I, I think it could go down to percentage because I believe they have a good team. But I see them finishing about sixth, maybe on percentage again. We're West Coast 
host Eagles, obviously a massive inclusion of Sam Mitchell to help out with the younger players and just bring a touch of class to the team. They already have some great players like Jeremy Jeremy McGovern and Josh Kennedy who wins the Coleman every single year <laughs> and yeah I just think this team has a fair bit of potential uh, a bit of a wild card team because people uh, are looking at them as hey they're, they're pretty good but are they good enough to make the grand final for example I don't think they'll make the grand final I think possibly prelims but I see them finishing about 5th, they have a very good team going into this year and uh, I just think if they can all work together, uh, Sam Mitchell chucking Josh Kennedy the ball, how lethal will that be? Will we know? We probably will, Kennedy will probably score 100 goals, I'm joking. How do you reckon the Eagles will go in 2017? In fourth, just making the top four, we have the Adelaide Crows. Obviously, they would have preferred to get Bryce Gibbs in, but their team just, it just works, really. They haven't got any massively star players. Obviously, they have Rory Sloan, Eddie Betts, uh, Tex, and players like that, uh, and both Crouchers. But uh, they don't have any massive, massive, massive players. Also, Rory Wade, he's very good in the defence. I think they just work. I think they will make the top four and be uh, be confirmed for the second week of the finals. Uh, and maybe they'll, they'll probably make the prelims. I think this team, uh, again, has a lot of potential, as every other team does this year, because they're, it, it's also even all throughout the competition. I think uh, Adelaide will make the top four, maybe just, and I think they're set for a pretty good year. the Western Bulldogs. Now they were premiers last year after a great season. They bring in the new signing of Travis Cloak, who who is a wild card. I, I think he could have an actual pretty good year. They showed their depth last year by winning both the VFL and AFL Grand Finals and with a, a very young list and a few legends in there like Tom Liberatore. Also they got the Bont. They've got Matthew Boyd still in there. Tom Boyd, what, what can he do this year? Luke Dull house as well uh, with a lot of other young players stuck in there like Lockie Hunter and Jackson McRae I think that uh, they'll have a very 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 good year obviously we did see signs with that massive comeback against Gold Coast in the JLT community series in that last round I think their list their team is very good very young as well so they can go into the future and have maybe a few more premierships. We'll see how they go in 2017. I think they'll finish around third because these two teams above them will be hungry for anything this year. Cheer, cheer the red and the white, honor the name by day and by night. In second, I have gone with the Swans. They just keep making grand final after grand final after grand final. Ben McGuinn is gone, and where the hell is Xavier Richards? He's probably chilling. They have a few great players, and I think this team will really work. Obviously, they have Buddy. Uh, they have Papui last year, who played very well as well, as well as Callum Mills. Ali, Ali. He, he looked bloody great. Kurt Tippett. Uh, apparently Daniel Hanabry's had a hell of a preseason. Luke Parker as well, he's elite. They have a bunch of awesome players and they also got they also got a pretty high pick as well. You know, you could say, oh the AFL favouring him a bit. I think they're set for another good year. Maybe not the granny. We'll see how they go. I think the granny might be the dogs and uh, the team is in first who obviously you probably do know by now but I think the Swans will be hungry to show that they're still a threat they obviously they're a threat since they make it to the grand final but they can't win on the grand final they want to show uh, that they're a great team and number one the minor premiers I have gone 
with the GWS Giants. Their team screams youth and uh, upcoming plays. Brett DeWidio comes in. Obviously, I, don't, I think he's been ruled out for round one. I think he's battling a bit of an injury, but he'll definitely be back. He's sure he, he's just fantastic. They've also got Callan Ward, Shane Mumford, Jonathan Patton, uh, Jeremy Cameron, Lockie Whitfield, Toby Green, Stephen Caniglio, Bloody, they have everyone, Phil Davis, <laughs> they have a bunch of great young players, and I think that they are up for minor premiers, everyone's predicting them there, I am as well, uh, and I think they can have another fantastic year, obviously they just missed out in the grand final last year, because the dogs were bloody hungry, but I think the Giants will have a great year, alright. Alright guys, that is about it for this predictions video. Hopefully you all have enjoyed. Let me know your predictions down in the comments down below. Also join my Super Coach League, as I said at the start of the video, all the way back probably like 15 minutes ago. Anyway guys, hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to smell button and subscribe. I'm okay. Until next time, peace.